So we've had several videos in this series where we've worked with vectors, primarily in animations, dealing with forces, velocities, positions. Um, and as you go through a, a physics class, your use of vectors is only going to get more involved. You're, you're never really going to leave vectors behind. And so VPython has a number of vector functions that are built in that you have to use all the time. Um, so today I wanted to take a look at some of those vector functions. Um, here we've got a simple vector defined, uh, vector A, uh, we'll call it, and uh, we're giving it an X component of three, a Y component of four, and a Z component of zero, just to make it easy for right now. And if you remember your SAT, this is a special vector because this makes a three, four, five triangle, because the hypotenuse of this triangle, meaning the magnitude of this vector, is gonna come out to be five. It's a Pythagorean triple. It's a really special thing in mathematics. And so magnitude is one of the things you would need to calculate about a vector. Um, and so you could go through the long and arduous process of taking square root of a dot x squared plus a dot y dot y squared plus a dot z squared, close square root, close the print, and it will give you the magnitude that you seek of five. Well, that's a lot of typing. That's a lot of uh, potential errors to make. Um, VPython offers a built-in magnitude function for you. You can simply say mag of A. Uh, let's check that it gives us the correct answer. Yeah, lo and behold, five. So instead of entering all of these keystrokes, you can just enter mag A and have a nice visual reminder of what it is that you're doing. Because you might look at this later and say, what was I calculating there? Oh yeah, the magnitude of A. So we don't need um, this anymore. We can just use mag of A. Let me leave a comment here, magnitude of A, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also get the, um, get the unit vector for A. So remember, a unit vector is what you get when you divide a vector by its magnitude so that you just get the direction of the vector with a new vector that just has a magnitude of one. So uh, let's, let's call that a hat, right? So usually you designate it with a hat. So ordinarily what you would do is you would take A and divide by mag of A. But again, that's a lot of things to type. Why do all that yourself when you can have vPython do the work for you and just say A dot hat. Um, so let's check this out. Let's have it print a hat. Control two. And lo and behold, here it gives you a vector. It's a unit vector. So these two have the, the, the components have the same ratio that they had before of three, four, zero. But the magnitude of this thing is going to be one. So if I take the magnitude of a hat, I should print it so that it will actually tell me what it's doing. If you print this, it gives you a magnitude of one, which is the definition of a unit vector. So that's pretty cool. If you've been in a physics class for any longer than about a month, you know that you also have to um, add vectors. So you can define a B vector. Uh, let's call this one uh, zero two one. Why not? You can just add the vectors together. So I can do A plus B. So let's do a print A plus B. And it interprets that as adding the components together. So let's see, let's do this manually. We should get a three, four, five, six, one. So we should get a three, six, one. Lo and behold, there we get it, three, six, one. Uh, it will also subtract vectors for you. So if I'm taking the difference here, I should get a three, two, negative one. Three, two, negative one, awesome. Um, you'll also find in a physics class, we like to multiply vectors together. And there are actually just two ways of multiplying a vector. The first is the dot product, where you're measuring the overlap of the two vectors. So you take the first components multiply them together, plus the second component is multiplied together, plus the third component is multiplied together. The dot product uh, loves for things to be equal to zero because three times zero gives you zero, zero times one gives you zero. So the dot product of A would be, A with B would just be eight. And B Python has a built-in dot product function. It's just called dot. So I can take dot of A comma B, control two. Oh yeah, I need to hit print. I'm sitting here staring at one, two, three, four, five print statements above, and it doesn't register with me, then I need to add another print statement. There we go, eight just as expected. Um, and then there's one more we'll look at today. That is the cross product. So this is the, this is about the most convoluted thing you can do with vectors at an introductory level, is take the cross product. 
And this is where you're trying to get out a third vector that is perpendicular to the other two vectors. Um, so let's see, so we're gonna take C equal to cross product of A comma B, the function is just cross. Uh, we'll have it print C, control two, I get four, negative three, six. Now, I do not feel like doing that cross product by hand to check it. Instead, I'm gonna do uh, something a little more clever. Um, you might remember that the cross product gives you a vector that is perpendicular to both A and B, and perpendicular vectors have zero dot product. So if I ask for the dot product between C and A, and I ask for the dot product between C and B, that should give me zero, because C is supposed to come out to be um, perpendicular to both A and B. Let's see, control two. And there I do get zeros. Um, oh, I need to add in a few comments. Uh, so I'm gonna add in a few comments here. Uh, again, as always, feel free to uh, make use of this code. Um, I hope it's good inspiration for you. Hope it gets you unstuck on some of the things you're working on. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be glad to address those in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.